In this part of the tutorial on final part, we are going to purify the overtoning, the sliding and the stability of the tank and we are going to calculate the reinforcement required by the ring wall foundation. The first verification that we are going to do is the overtuning verification. To do that, we have to calculate the overtuning moment with respect to the slab. The overtuning moment, Ns, is calculated with the equation 6.1.5 and 2 of the American Petroleum Institute 650 standard, where Xis is the height from the bottom tank shawl to the center action of the lateral seismic force related to the impulsive liquid force and is calculated with the equation E6.1.2.2 and that's one for this case. Xs is the height from the bottom tank shawl to the shell's center of gravity. Xr is the height from the bottom tank shawl to the roof. Xcs is the height from the bottom tank shawl to the center of action of the lateral seismic pore related to the convective liquid force and is calculated with the equation E6.1.2.2 and 3 resulting in 130,659.84 kilopounds feet. Now we calculate the overtuning stability ratio with the equation E6.2.3 and 1 of the American Petroleum Institute 650 standard where WF is the weight of the tank bottom, WT is the total weight of the tank, and WFD is the total weight of the tank foundation. And the result shall be equal or greater than 2, as requested in section E6.2.3. As we can see, the verification passed. The next verification is the tank stability in accordance with section E6.2 of the American Petroleum Institute 650 standard. The first thing that we're going to do is calculate the overtuning moment with respect to the ring wall. The overtuning moment, MRS, is calculated with equation 6.1.5 and that's one of the American Petroleum Institute 650 standard, where XI is the high from the bottom tank shell to the center action of the lateral seismic force related to the impulsive liquid force and is calculated with the equation E6.1.2.1 and that's one for this case. Xc is the high from the bottom tank shell to the center of action of the lateral seismic force related to the convective liquid force and is calculated with the equation E6.1.2.1 and that's three. The result of the overtuning moment is 40,049.38 kilopounds feet. The next step is calculate the effective specific gravity of liquid GE with this equation, giving a result of 0.725. Now we calculate the force resistance of lift in annular region WA with equation E6.2.1.1 and that's 1B, where Fy is the gyro strength of the plate and TA is the thickness of the first place of the annulus, giving a result of 2.46 kilopounds per feet. Now we calculate the weight per unit length of the tank and roof acting at base WT according with the equation E6.2.1.1.1 and dash 2 where WRS is the roof weight acting on the shell giving a result of 0 0.930 kilopounds per feet. The last step the verification is calculate the stability of the tank with the equation E6.2.1.1.1 and that's one of the American Petroleum Institute 650 standard and verify that the value is in greater than 1.54. The result is 0 0.864, which means the tank is stable but has a little bit of lift, but is self-anchored. Now we are going to verify the slider resistance according with the equation of section E7.6 of the American Petroleum Institute 650 standard, where mu is the friction coefficient that cannot be taken more than 0.4, and the result is 7,947.48 kilopounds. Making the verification, the sliding resistance is greater than the base shear. The verification passed. The next step is calculate the reinforcement required by the ring wall foundation. The third thing is calculate the factor hook tension force, TH, 
with the question of the section 5.6.3.3 of the Process Industries Practice STE 03020 standard, where R is the radius of the tank, H is the height of the ring wall, and K is the lateral air pressure coefficient that will be assumed at 0 0.5, as requested on section 5.1.8 of the PAP STE 03020 standard. As a reminder, all the values until now are at service level and need to be factored to ensure the compatibility with American Concrete Institute 380 standard, which means that life and product loads must be multiplied by 1.2, the seismic load by 1.4, and the wind load by 1.6. The result is 279.30 kilopounds. The next step Let's calculate the required hook tension reinforcement AS with the question of section 5.6.3.4 of the PAP STE 03020 standard, where phi is the reduction factor according to the table 21.2.2 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard for members' intention. The required hook reinforcement is 8.27 square inch. The next step is calculate the twist moment that acts due to the dead, liquid, and side wind loads in the green wall foundation, calculating the eccentricities of the loads involved, supported in this picture, and knowing the distance from the edge of the ring wall foundation to shell, and the width of the ring wall foundation. In this table are tabulated the values of each torsional moment. The summation is 1,997.49 pounds feet. By experience, for the dimension of the removal foundation, the moment that acts in the beam is too small to produce an inclined crack shear in the core of the removal foundation, and I am unsure that the torsional reinforcement to use is the minimum allowed by the American Concrete Institute 380 standard. The equations in the section 9.6.4.3 allow us to calculate the minimum longitudinal reinforcement required by torsion moment, where ACP is the area enclosed by the outside perimeter of the cross section. PH is the perimeter of the center line of outermost closed transverse torsional reinforcement. FYT is the gear strength of the transverse reinforcement, and FY is the gear strength of the longitudinal reinforcement, keeping a result of 2.73 square inch. And finally, according with the NXB of the American Petroleum Institute 650 standard sections B4.2.3, we calculate the transfer reinforcement required from temperature and shrinkage with this equation, where B is the width of the foundation. The reinforcement to be placed is 11 square inch for longitudinal reinforcement and 0 0.342 square inch per feet for transfer reinforcement. The logical reinforcement shall be distributed equitably in each phase. We will use system number 6 for logical reinforcement and stirrup number 4 each 12 inch for transfer reinforcement. With this, conclude this tutorial.